His soil is still rich enough, but one day this soil will be poor and domesticated. Unnatural, domesticated, huh? Civilized. Na nature has more vigor, you see. Um, and no tall tree will be able to grow in it. Alas, the time is coming when man will no longer shoot the arrow of his longing beyond man, beyond man, and the string of his bow will have forgotten how to whir. Whir? Is that the sound it makes? I say unto you, one must still have chaos in oneself to be able to give birth to a dancing star. One of the more poetic lines in all of literature, one of Nietzsche's most poetic lines, one must still have chaos in oneself to be able to give birth to a dancing star. What is a dancing star? What is chaos? What does it mean to give birth to it? Leave all those aside. It's a very poetic line. You have to give it that much. I say unto you, you still have chaos in yourselves. Alas, the time is coming when man will no longer give birth to a star. Alas, the time of the most despicable man is coming, he that is no longer able to despise himself. Behold, I show you the last man. What is love? What is creation? What is longing? What is a star? Good question. Thus asks the last man, and he blinks. The earth has become small, and on it hops the last man, who makes everything small. His race is as ineradicable as the flea beetle. The last man lives longest. The flea beetle? So humans are a pest? Now those of you who have to put up with this environmentalism bit going on in the modern world, uh, you know that a lot of people regard humans as a pest on the earth. And virtually anything and everything we do is a disturbance. And they think that everything was better off before there were humans and without humans. There is a video on YouTube called... Uh, uh, hell, I don't know what it's called and I don't want to, to get any more views. It's, it shows the earth sick with a case of humans. So, all right. We have invented happiness, say the last men, and they blink. They have left the regions where it was hard to live, for one needs warmth. One still loves one's neighbor, and rubs against him, and rubs against him, for one needs warmth. Becoming sick and harboring suspicion are sinful to them. One proceeds carefully. A fool, whoever still. Uh, stumbles over stones or human beings. A fool, comma, whoever still stumbles over stones or human beings, exclamation point. A little poison, now and then, that makes for agreeable dreams. Interesting. I don't know what the hell that means. A little poison now and then, makes for agreeable dreams, and much poison in the end, for an agreeable death. One still works, for work is a form of entertainment, but one is careful lest the entertainment be too harrowing. One no longer becomes poor or rich. Both require too much exertion. Who still wants to rule? Who obey? Both require too much exertion. True. It's true. In America, people don't give their whole lives to uh, running the nation. They only get to give four or eight years, and we consider them lucky. People used to consider the kings lucky as well. Also, he says, uh, one no longer becomes poor or rich. Both require too much exertion. The middle class. It's too difficult to be poor. If you're poor, you don't have a car. Um, you might not be able to pay your bills, uh, phone getting shut off, power getting shut off, getting evicted, moving house to house. Too hard. Too difficult. It takes too much effort, too much energy to to not be able to use your car to do stuff and things like this. And on the other hand, it's too difficult to become rich. Interesting. And he's, he's, he says this is a bad thing, right? Humanity's running down a bit. No shepherd and one herd. There's not even anybody guiding you. You're just a bunch of sheep. Everybody wants the same. Everyone is the same. Whoever feels different goes voluntarily into a madhouse. Formerly, all the world was mad, say the most refined, and they blink. One is clever and knows everything that has ever happened, so there is no end of derision. 
One still quarrels, but one is soon reconciled, else it might spoil the digestion. Don't, uh, don't let your quarrels go on too long. It'll mess with your digestion, spoil the digestion. One has one's little pleasure for the day and one's little pleasure for the night, but one has a regard for health. We have invented happiness, say the last men, and they blink. And here ended Zarathustra's first speech, which is also called the prologue, for at this point he was interrupted by the clamor and delight of the crowd. Give us this last man, Zarathustra, they shouted. Turn us into these last men, then we shall make you a gift of the overman. And all the people jubilated and clucked with their tongues. Clucked with their tongues. But Zarathustra became sad and said to his heart, They do not understand me. I am not the mouth for these ears. I seem to have lived too long in the mountains. I listened too much to brooks and trees. Now I talk to them as to goat herds. Nature educated me too much. I wonder if Nietzsche was a fan of Rousseau. My soul is unmoved and bright as the mountains in the morning, but they think I am cold, and I jeer and make dreadful jests. So his soul is bright, and remember, he's an arsonist, possibly, bringing fire down from the mountain, and they think that he's cold. And now they look at me and laugh, and as they laugh, they even hate me. There is ice in their laughter. And then something happened in Synopsis 6, page 19. Then something happened that made every mouth dumb and every eye rigid. For meanwhile, the tightrope walker had begun his performance. He had stepped out of a small door and was walking over the rope, stre stretched between two towers and suspended over the marketplace and the people. Here comes the tightrope walker. When he had reached the exact middle of his course, the small door opened once more, and a fellow in motley clothes, looking like a jester, jumped out and followed the first one with quick steps. Forward, lamefoot, he shouted in an awe-inspiring voice. Forward, lazy bones, smuggler, pale face, or I shall tickle you with my heel. What are you doing here between the towers? The tower is where you belong. You ought to be locked up. You block the way for one better than yourself. This is just an act going on in the town. Fraught with meaning, of course. So this careful guy is out there making his way across, and here comes a maniac behind him, uh, shouting all kinds of crazy things. And, and with every word he came closer and closer, but when he was but one step behind, a dreadful thing happened which made every mouth dumb and, dumb and every eye rigid. He uttered a devilish cry and jumped over the man who stood in his way. This man, however, seeing his rival win, lost his head and the rope, tossed away his pole, and plunged into the depth even faster, a whirlpool of arms and legs. The marketplace became as the sea when a tempest pierces it. The people rushed apart and over one another, especially at the place where the body must hit the ground. <laughs> Zarathustra, however, did not move. And it was right next to him that the body fell, badly maimed and disfigured, but not yet dead. And after a while, the shattered man recovered consciousness and saw Zarathustra kneeling beside him. What are you doing here? he asked Zarathustra at last. I have long known the devil would trip me, he said to Zarathustra. He w now he will drag me to hell. Would you prevent him? So he thinks the devil's killed him, and here's Zarathustra, and he's like, the devil should be coming to get me. Are you going to stop him? By my honor, friend, answered Zarathustra, all of which you speak does not exist. There is no devil and no hell. Your soul will be dead even before your body. Fear nothing further. The man looked up suspiciously. If you speak the truth, he said, I lose nothing when I lose my life. I lose nothing? except your life. I am not much more than a beast that has been taught to dance by blows and a few meager morsels. If that's all you did with your life. By no means, said Zarathustra, you have made danger your vocation. There is nothing contemptible in that. Now you perish of your vocation. For that I will bury you with my own hands. When Zarathustra said this, the dying man answered no more.